Eve. So without further ado, why don't we uh, take it away, Juice, and let this um, crazy lady introduce herself for us. My name is Michelle Forcier, um, and I have a medical degree from University of Connecticut Residency, University of Utah Pediatrics, and I've worked for a number of different Planned Parenthoods for 20 years. I do advanced contraception and abortion as well as gender hormones and sort of looking at the whole sort of schema of gender, sex, and and reproductive um, justice. Wow. What an introduction she gave herself there, huh? Uh, (laughs) That is, uh, that's an impressive list of Absolutely nothing. Crazy buzzwords and uh, credentials, which we covered last week on the show, means absolutely nothing to us here on the Right and Wrong show. Let her get going and you'll see how valuable those credentials really are. I'd rather uh, get that guy from There's Something About Mary when he just says, I'm a pizza delivery boy. Name's Norm. Hi. (laughs) Just give me one of those instead of her rambling nonsense. But why don't we jump jump on to the next part of the the uh, clip there, Juice. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's research and data that show that um, babies and infants um, understand differences in gender. Some children figure out their gender really early. And the reason why we are say, oh, that's, that's interesting or important is because they're figuring out their gender identity is not necessarily congruent with their sex assigned at birth. <laughs> what? Yeah. How about that little like like noise she made at the beginning of the uh of her answer to yeah yeah mm, yeah yeah <laughs> whatever that was but j- babies are figuring it out at what no no they're not you know what figures it out penises or vaginas that's all it is stop overcomplicating this and she thinks she's a genius with this stuff real proud of herself sophisticated with her fancy blue hair ugh all right keep going juice when the, when the doctor sees the penis and says, this is a male, has the sex of male, that's an arbitrary distinction. Telling that family, based on that little penis, that your child is absolutely 100% male identified, no matter what else occurs in their life, that's not correct. Yes, it is. It's correct. That little penis, whether it's little, huge, medium... Whatever it may be, that is the greatest indication that it's a boy. No matter what else happens in that child's life, no matter what other things this person goes on to encounter or experience or whatever else she wants to talk about, that child is and always will be a male. What's the gender affirmation process? Affirmation means that as a pediatrician, as someone who says my job is to provide the best medical care for you, is I need to listen really carefully. Did you notice how she started talking to him the way she would talk to one of her, one of the children that is is there to see her? Yeah. Yeah. See, I want to talk about affirmation means whatever it is in front of me that we're going to discover. So manipulative. Absolutely absurd. I'll let her keep going. And how I put it in words for kids so that they can understand it is tell me your story. Where have you been in terms of your gender and your gender identity? Where are you right now? And more excitingly, where would you like to be in the future? Yeah, more excitingly for her, because that's her time to tell them where she would like them to be in their future, (laughs) because she's going to coach them and push them into changing, trying, trying to change the whatever sex they actually are at that moment, because that's her objective. That is her agenda. And that's her goal when she has these kids coming to see her. And at what age does the medical transition begin with uh, medication? So medical affirmation begins when the patient says they're ready for it. So that could be a, a kiddo who is just starting puberty and panicking because they're getting breast buds or their penis is getting bigger and busier and they're worried about all kinds of masculine changes. And that way, puberty blockers, which are completely reversible. No, no, they're not and don't have permanent effects are wonderful because we can put that pause on puberty. Just like if you were listening to music, you put the pause on and we stop the blockers and puberty would go right 
back to where it was, the next note in the song just delayed that period of time. You can't pause puberty, you psycho. What is wrong with this lady? She seriously believes that? Get out of here with that. This is insane. This woman should have her medical license taken away from her. She should lose all credibility and status that she has within the psychiatric community. But nope, she's going to be she, she's going to be praised. I'm, I'm sure. Actually, I haven't even looked into it since this aired. Uh, it's been less than a week, but I'm sure she's already a victim. I'm sure she's already claiming uh, um, that she's being bullied, harassed, whatever. I'm, I'm sure people have found her somewhere on Twitter, on social media and um, told her what she should have been told a hell of a long time ago. Let's finish it up here, Juice, with the with this one last little clip. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right, which mm-hmm. has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders? You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview because it seems like it's well, going in a particular direction. Well, you're a medical professional. I am a medical professional. So you don't want to talk about the drugs that you give to kids? or Again, I'm a physician and I use medication. You're choosing exploitive words. Drugs I give to I'm, kids. I'm choosing a chemical word concentration. that was in a dictionary. That's not a correct term for puberty blocking. I, mean, I could like, look it up on my phone, but I'm pretty sure if I looked it up... Like, you you can look it up on your phone. It says medical definition, the administration of a drug to bring about a marked reduction in the body's production of androgens and especially testosterone. And I'm saying, as a pediatrician who takes care of hundreds of these kids, when you use that terminology, you are being malignant and harmful. I mean, there are some who would say that giving chemical castration drugs to kids is malignant and harmful. It's about the context of caring for a child and, and seeing the, the suffering that kids can have that have not been in affirmative home situations. Wow. Yeah, we here on the Right and Wrong Show would call it chemical castration. Yep, we're, we're in favor of that um, terminology being used here. Doctor, sorry that you don't like um, calling a spade a spade. Like, is what it is. What are you doing to these children? And the manipula- the manipulation of words there with calling it gender-affirming drugs or whatever she said, that health care, um, it's not affirming their gender. It's actually lying about their gender. It's, it's teaching them to avoid their psychological problems. It's teaching them to avoid what's at the root of the problem here. And for her, like, for her to actually sit there and think, you start putting like a 12-year-old, 13-year-old on drugs like that, you think you're going to be able to pick back up with puberty when they decide at 25 years old that, you know what, they want to go back to being who they actually are? We're going to have have 25-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds walking around going through puberty? Get out of here with that. Ugh. I'm sorry, Michelle Fossier. 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 Whatever the hell your name is. You are a complete psycho, and I would want you nowhere near my children. I don't think you should be near anybody's children, and I think you should be um, in a jail cell somewhere. So you, my friend, the least of your worries today is the fact that you're getting one big old fat come on, man, from the boys here on the Right and Wrong Show. So <laughs> I don't know. You got some more, bigger problems than us to deal with, my friend.